Happy, happy Sabbath, royal queens. Oh, praises, honor, and glory to our Father. Thank you, Father Yah, in Yahushua's name. Oh, my goodness. Well, I pray that everyone had a wonderful, glorious Shabbat, and you were filled with the Holy Spirit and was glad in it. All oh, praises, honor, and glory to our Father. And with that being said, episode 51, the flesh versus the spirit, spiritual warfare. And we must always remember that spiritual warfare, this is nothing new under the sun. It's been since time has been. So, but what we should know and learn is to remember the days of old. Remember how our ancestors handled the war. So spiritual warfare, battles of the flesh. Now I wanted to take this section and talk about some of those battles, bring out scriptures on those battles, as well as clear up a common misconception with one of those. Let's go. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. <laughs> all praises, all praises, honor and glory to the Father. Now we know this one, we brought this out several times. But this is the basis of where we are in our spiritual warfare. Now, that common misconception I talked about is with this, as you see, Jezebel spirit or Jezebel flesh. Because the things that Jezebel committed, they were of the flesh. They were manifested of the flesh. She was all about murdering people and killing people to get what her husband what she desired for her husband. She was like about getting people to worship Baal, who, you know, was her God. But I will, I'll probably do a whole lesson on her and her husband Ahab. But this whole thing right here, Jezebel spirit, usually refers to a woman who's like a homewrecker or, you know, just hot and, you know, thottish or whatever you want to call it. But um, I've been trying to find references of her being a prostitute. No, she was the the daughter of a king of, you know, like the Phoenicians or whatever. But in reality, no, it's not Jezebel's spirit. It was not of a spirit. All of her works are of the flesh. And so let's pull some stuff to get into that. So. Just when you hear that Jezebel spirit, just know this is Jezebel, works of the flesh. Okay? So let's get into it. First Kings 16.31 And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, 
that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ephbal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. See, now this is talking about Ahab. Ahab was an Israelite king, and he chose to marry Jezebel, who was of the Zidonians. They're like Phoenicians. So, and worship Baal. And you already know. You already know the father don't like that. I just, this is why we have to learn. We have to learn from our past and how they did things. You cannot marry these other nations. The father tells you this for a reason. But let's continue. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 22. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. She done so much. She done so much, but there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So even though she did all this stuff, it's still, it's still on Ahab. You the man. And you letting this wife come in and just tear your faith and everything all apart. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Let's talk about Baal. She was all about the sacrifice of Baal. Had parties. If you ain't worshiping Baal, do not come up in here. I mean, she was terrible. But this is just showing you all of her works are that of the flesh that we just read about. Spiritual warfare. Battle against evil spirits. So this section right here is about to tell us exactly how these two actually flow together, the battle against the flesh and the battle against the spirits, okay, especially the evil ones. And we're going to see exactly how the father uses the evil spirits in order to bring about his will <laughs> and in order to bring about what he wants <laughs> done. All praises. And this shows us that he's in control of it all. Good and evil. Let's go. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. And the Lord Yah commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So this is where, <laughs> where it all happened, guys. Like, totally in the beginning. And there's been this battle, you know, ever since. Because we know what happened after this. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 and 15. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from Yah troubleth thee. So this is showing us right here, like right before this is when David was anointed with the oil by Samuel. And then 
they're telling you, hey, the spirit of Yah departed from him, left. And then the evil spirit came in. And <laughs> let's just keep going and you'll see exactly what the father does at this point. First Samuel chapter 16, verses 16 and 17. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is, who is a cunning player on the harp, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from Yah is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand. And thou shalt be well. And what y'all think Saul said? <laughs> he said, And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Well, all praises, honor, and glory to the Father. He done put the evil spirit on Saul and told him the only way to get it off is to have the somebody who plays the harp well knowing that this is David to bring him in right under the man whose position that he would take <sighs> I love the way the father does things all praises first kings chapter 11 verse 33 because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth the goddess of the Zidonians, Shamash, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways, and do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Oh, it was it's so sad right here, it's so sad. But as we can see, King Solomon had to take the brunt of the things that he did in his next generation of children. That is where the kingdom of Israel was split. But this just shows you the father does not approve. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 4. For though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yah, to the pulling down of strongholds. 5 and 6, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yah, and bringing into captivity Every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. All praises, honor, and glory to the Father. So this is just telling us if you're living that obedient lifestyle and you're walking in the ways of the law, the the obedience of Christ, then you know that you are on the right side, the right side of righteousness. All oh, praises. First Corinthians chapter ten, verses nineteen through twenty. What say I then that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say. That the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to Yah. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. So this is just telling us right here. If we know that something evil is going on over there, we can't even fellowship with them. So sorry. So sorry. No fellowshipping with the evil that is going on. First Corinthians ten twenty one, ye cannot drink the cup of Yah and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table 
and of the table of devils. And that's exactly what that previous scripture was stating. Like, you just can't do both. You can't serve two masters. You just cannot. And this has been the choice. Are you going with the good? Or are you going with the evil? This is the choice that we all must make. Are we going with the good? Or are we going with the evil? And with that being said, let's get this one. Joshua twenty four fifteen, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, said Joshua, we will serve the Lord. All oh, praises on and glory to the Father. And this is just another breakdown of who, which side are you on? Good or evil? It's one or the other. And whom will you serve this day? Happy, happy Sabbath, royal queens. Shabbat Shalom. All praises, all praises, honor, and glory to our Father. Thank you, Father. Abba Yah, in Yahweh Shah's name, we are so grateful and thankful for it all. And with that being said, <laughs> I think y'all already know <laughs> what time it is. It is time for the Royal Queen's Roll Call. Queen Circle, yeah, come together, let's do it. Queen Circle, no way, no put on the whole armor of Yah. Queen Circle, keep in this commandments, that's how we fight. Queen Circle, all the glory, praise to the most high. Yeah.